when I walked up here, I told Dr. Wilkerson I was glad I let her go first. <laughs> There's a reason for that. She, she hit uh, a chord with me. Um, senior year in high school, I get accepted to one of the school, but they accepted the school, uh, one of the guys at the Air Force Academy. My math teacher at the time says, I used to be an instructor out there, and you'll never graduate. I took perverse satisfaction in sending him a graduation announcement. <laughs> <laughs> so I can relate to that. And I also just, com I just uh, completed my doctorate in February. So for all you youngsters out there, you know, the reality is you're going to be four years old with or without the degree. So you might as well get the degree. So uh, I was at Walmart the other last night and somebody said, go back to school as I'm picking up stuff from my grandson. I go, never too young, never too old. <laughs> HB Tech Solutions, I want to talk to you today about our energy reduction device. One of the questions I want you guys to look at is, I'm here for help. I am here, Derek Mercer, who's with our company, is also here in the back. Guys, we're a startup. And we're trying to get things going here, and quite frankly, we don't know all the answers. And I'm not sure we're asking all the questions. So when I look, when I present what I'm going to present to you, I need you guys to come back to me and say, Jeff, that just ain't going to work. Or say something to let us know, because we really are here to have you pick our brains, but more importantly, I want to suck out what I can to take back to our CEO who's up at Duke having surgery this morning, or he'd be here. So I, I really want you guys to look at that and, and take, so what, we need help. A while back, I listened to the garrison commander on post say the two biggest costs he has are people and energy. And as a business owner, I'm willing to bet one of the biggest costs you have is energy. Yeah. You, you know, because you got to make a choice. If, if, if the income comes in low, you lay people off and you do your hours and you just go take a profit to do it. So if we could, now imagine this, if we could lower your energy cost by 80%, would you be interested? Be interested by lowering by 80 percent. We have a device we call the intelligent current device. <coughs> this is a solution to reduce the cost of energy by changing the how lighting is done in a facility. So instead of going from these 120 volt things, we go to low voltage LEDs. We look at those. The manufacturer's tests right now show an 80% reduction in the cost of energy, directly tied to reducing the cost of lighting a facility. Now there's other solutions out there. I've seen solutions that you can tie into a computer network. Well, you know my joke about the computer networks, you know, when the network goes down, guess what happens to your lighting? It goes down. They also have solutions out there where you can walk down the hallway and the light turns on right behind you, it turns off, it turns off. It's limited to the height of the ceiling, 15 feet. You got a bigger uh, parking lot outside like we just walked into here from over there or wherever, all those lights, ours are waterproof. Other solutions are. So we can use it wherever we go. Oh, and you don't need to rewire. There's only one connection that needs to be made at the panel. We hook the device up to the panel, to your lighting circuits. That's the only hookup. We don't need to go into your building and pull wire or rewire. We can use the existing wire. So we're looking at this right now. It's designed for, we're looking for medium buildings. For large facilities, we require a booster. So you think about a, you know, the router, when you have a big facility, you got to put a booster down lane so that, you know, the signal de deteriorates. We're going to put a booster. That's easily fixed up. 
As I said, the manufacturers tested it, it works. They're saying 80%. Well, I'm from Missouri, and nah, not really, but <laughs> I've taken that attitude. I don't want to stand up here and tell somebody, ma'am, I can save you 80%. And then go, sucker, it's really going to be 50%, but she'll buy the product anyway, because it's over 80. I want to be able to look you for the interface and say, you'll have a 50% reduction. I know that's what it is. I want to give you the straight word. And to find out what it really is, we need the real world testing. It's been tested in the labs. That's what the lab is, but I need real world facilities. I need a warehouse. I need a parking lot. I need a place to put it in see what it really does in the real world. I know what the numbers say. Like I said, I'm from Missouri. Then you just want to, and the last thing, we need for a startup. You know, when you start up, Pam, you know this, <coughs> cash be tight, cash be tight. So if we are also interested in talking to investors, so we can do that afterwards, and you know, so you could, Big pockets, Pete. You got that big grin on her face right there. She's all ready for it. <laughs> what we're looking at here, and this is where I need your guys' input on it. Jeff, are you right or wrong? What are we thinking at? We're finalizing the pricing agreement with a supplier and a prototype. So I'm supposed to have a nice prototype here to show you today. As you can see, I have a nice prototype here to show you today. <laughs> it should be here Friday. And prototypes really the bad uh, wrong world is a limited run, produ limited production run. So they have the prototypes the wrong words, it's a limited production run. We're going to send an electrician out to California. We're going to send in somebody here from Fayetteville, especially because that's where the uh, device is being made right now, <coughs> and learn how to install it. And they're going to be our train the trainer. Uh, we want to be able to assure profitability. Yeah, we want to make some money. We want to make some money. We want to make sure you guys save energy, we make money. And we want to test this beast. Confirm the numbers, we'll find out what the numbers really are like. And we're going to develop our operational support. And we need, a, we need an office. We're all working, Eric and I are working out of our houses right now. We need a place. We need a place. And then we're going to have to hire a sales staff. We're going to have to hire an installation staff. We're going to have to hire somebody for an office staff, too. <coughs> if this thing snowballs, we're going to need somebody to take orders, somebody to manage that workload, to get people out there, and then somebody to install it. And somebody, unfortunately, we're going to have to troubleshoot because Murphy does live in, and stuff happens. So we have to be prepared for Murphy. So that's what we're looking at as we do this. Our initial customers, as you can see on this list, Facilities, businesses that use lights a lot. High lighting demand places. Well, you're going, well, new construction does it. Hey, it's going to be easy to put it in new construction because you don't have to order the circuits, you just tie it right in from the stuff. But these are the kind of places we're looking at for our initial customers. So we look at follow on, also places that have big lighting demand. So that's what we're looking at for follow on. So between these two, our initial and our follow-on, we believe we're going to be able to get a nice mix and a nice uh, cross-section to be able to get some real confirmation of the numbers and see where we're at on those. Lastly, we're looking residential. <coughs> we're looking at that. We can go residential right now, but it's going to have, it's probably going to be best for new construction or somebody who really, when you're coming up, do the, if you're going to put a uh, is the demand water heater, for example? Let's do everything at, a at one time type stuff. So we're looking at uh, doing some real world environments, conducting a te test, and then with initial and follow on customers. Then we want to publish these test results and develop a, an adequacy. And we want that up in Fort Bragg and at Fayetteville. We, if we can show the garrison, garrison that eight can save a cost of energy, and I could talk about it all day. But if I can show them numbers, then I have a little bit stronger dog in the fight if I can do that. And the last thing is I want to develop contracts with the government and commercial businesses. And what we're thinking about as we do that right now is we do for the initial install, hey, we'll come and install it for you, pro bono. We're going to do pro bono. You know? 
And if this thing works for you, then over time, we'll recoup the cost. But I'm not expecting any money up front from you. And if it doesn't work, I'll come and refix it the way it was. You'll never know over here. That's the kind of thing we're, we're thinking about doing as we come to get these initial testings that, that, that go through. So we got pros and cons. If we look at both Bragg and the community, multiple lines, wider audience, both government and, and commercial. And as Hector said, they want about licenses, permits, all that stuff. You know, trying to get the government you know, to, to work with us. The federal government, not the city government, the federal government could be a little bit problematic as they start looking at money and all that stuff comes along. More personnel, and uh, we got this list, what I talked about earlier, we're gonna need a very solid operational shop that manages the installation, the ordering. So we have just, I don't want just in time, I want better than just in time. I don't want a lot of inventory, but I need some inventory. Uh, just, in, and, uh, just in time is good, but a little better than that. Our install folks, and our sales folks. So, this is the first question I have. What are we forgetting? What are we forgetting? How are you going to be paid? Are you going to be paid up front by the customer? Or, like for instance, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a consultant in the telecom industry, and I work on a contingency basis. You know, in other words, I take a percentage of your savings, so I'm highly motivated to save you money because the more money I save you, the more money I make. What type of uh, what type of income structure are you looking at? We had talked about pay up front, <coughs> kind of like this contingency bit, because then you get residual. Yeah. So I'm. Can you slide over top a little bit? So a contingency versus. I hadn't thought about that. You know, that's a sales point for me in that I can come in and tell someone I don't cost you anything up front. If I can't save you money, my services cost you nothing. And that's what we're talking about here. We'll put the device in, you know, pro bono, but you know, if it, does, if it works, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll go. But, you know. yeah. yeah. I just don't know how you'd be able to prove that if it's new construction. Yeah. Well, that's why we're not looking at new construction right front, up front. We're looking at the existing facilities. So I could, if I could go to uh, Hendricks, you know, the Jeep yes. dealer up there, and I could take, and I was agonizing about this last night, because I think about my, my, life, my energy bill, it's just a bill. I can't tell whether it's for the dishwasher, the washing machine, or the lights. But if I can take my bill for March, and see when, the, when half the house was gone to South Carolina in April over break, and I have a reduction, well then there's gotta be a cost. And I can maybe figure out, okay, here's, you know what, there's an effect, what's the cost? So if I put this box in and I can show your pro, your energy uses drop significantly, then we may be able to connect one to the other and go and go from there. And that's what I'm kind of hoping. Uh, just a quick question: If you uh, uh, have you, I know you haven't had anybody trained yet. But how long would it take somebody, uh, the people in California? How long would it take them to? What they are telling us is two days. Does it really? Is, <coughs> now this is with an like somebody who has been doing a. You know, a journeyman uh, or, or an you know, uh, one step above apprentice yeah. electrician. So they, they know they know how to pull wire, they know some of the code. So they can go to the panel, look at it, go, you know, diary, lighting, 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 and do the connection. We are told, we have been told, like I said, we've been told, we haven't done it ourselves yet, that an install would take about 90 minutes. That's what we have been told. So like said, I want to I want to confirm that. Yeah. You know, that's what we, that's what we've been told. So so if that's true, I mean, maybe uh, like a local case study, somebody you can mine the data with, uh, like the Jeep place you're talking about. <coughs> you can put one in pro bono, let it run for a month. Yes. Use that as your case study. Yes. Yeah. That's that's the kind of thing we're looking at, like yours with the contingency, because if it works, hey, we won't pull it out. Now we just yeah. keep keep going there. Is so, there bulb changes or the bulb changes yes we have to replace this with an led but unlike other solutions the bulbs we have fit standard features <coughs> so i do not need to go so my cost is lower because i'm not pulling out all these fixtures how's the lighting them. compared to 
Is the equivalent lighting yes, and lumen, color? Yes, lumens to lumens, color to color. <coughs> Existing ballast and all that yes. sort of stuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I would think it would be worthwhile to form some kind of a relationship with the um, the local energy co-ops because I find them to be um, consumer advocates because they're owned. When you say they talk something like Lumbee. Yeah, South okay. River. I mean, <coughs> it is night and day dealing with them as compared to the Duke, other, the other, the Duke other. lack of progress energy. Yeah. <laughs> did you just really say you know, they, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they need to uh, raise like the that. bar. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm a Lumbee customer, and I, I, oh, I know, yes, yes. I love them. For the moment you walk in, yeah. the office is yeah. different. Yeah, and I think that they are more consumer advocates. I have one more slide, and this one, so this was, I stole your slide. <laughs> I read the email. <laughs> so this is, keep going. What can you guys, you know, we, we can. Uh, I think it appears that everything is contingent on your testing. And as a marketer, I'm looking down the road of how you're going to do that. So <coughs> on the top of my head, I would go to uh, Spring Lake, Hope Mills, and you know, the Fayetteville Area Chambers with a presentation about this that says you know you would take with the list that you have in the first list of all the things you know kind of gas stations those kind of places to get those test sites you would offer them all a test site of their members you know and then you would screen and you pick the ones you want maybe one or two in each area that would be six but you would have something in all those different <clears throat> types of businesses you were talking about and then to go with that, there are several groups um, between the universities and uh, the technical here, but the technical more based high schools that could do a, a study. So you would be giving back to the community too. But then on the other end of it, when you get the data back in, then you could say, you know, as a community partner, you worked with um, those businesses that are chamber members, and these are the results that we came up with, which would be a great marketing um, strategy and then to have uh, when you really push it out to say these are different places in Cumberland County that have experiences go and talk to them. And, and I've been talking to Hannah over at the single single stands. Mm -hmm. I see her at one today. That's good. So, so push it out. Sir, have you got a macro view of what it's going to cost to get this started, sustain it, that you can make some money? Will you be the exclusive <coughs> for this product? And what we're looking work. at is um, that is the uh, Hector has a uh, Friday phone call with the folks in California. They, quite frankly, not to be repeated or for attribution, even though we're on tape, they've been, dra <laughs> they've been dragging their feet. We were promises. I talked about doing this in March, and the advice wasn't even near. It took them four weeks to get a box. And our frustration level went high. So we're, we're, our, our down the road plan is we are going to manufacture these here in Fayetteville. We want to bring in smart people, and we're looking at veterans for our smart people. Uh, I think everybody, everybody but Carlita <coughs> is a vet. Yes. And, and the company, so we have some affinity for that marketplace. So we're looking at that. That's where we're kind of going to. Um, the guy in California, this was more a hobby to him than a vocation. So we have no, we have no problem of trying to, um, I'm trying, what's the, take it, take it or run with it. Do they it. hold a patent on it? Or do they have competitors? We, one of the slides I took out of here, one of the things was the patents. The guy in California swears up and down he can get patents on these, on this, but he has yet to file. All right. and, and that's another thing out there. What we're doing is not, it's, you know, um, my father's a, a double E guy, and I talked to him about this. He says, hey, the, the, you know, we've been, it, okay, how many of us had model trains as a kid? Yeah. Right. Remember how we took the lights for the model trains? 
essentially the same same concept. You know, so it's nothing. It's nothing that's new out there. We're taking existing technology and putting it into a new role. But the question is pertinent for the reason that it's speed to market when you get it out there, and in, in particular from what you just said, if it is common techniques that are just packaged a different way, it's gone. It's you're gonna knock it off in a heartbeat if they see it. <coughs> but what I was getting at is do you know how much it's gonna to cost to produce it? Yes. We we have we yes. The numbers we have been told are in the mid uh, fifteen to two thousand is what we're looking at. Uh, to produce, and that's, that's <coughs> actually, actually production. Production is. Uh, I'm sure I'm just talking talking right here. I want to say a cost of the box is the. Um, I'm thinking of Shark Tank, where the guy says, "How much does it cost you to make it?" And I think so. I can't remember what that's called. You know, but you know when I when I. The cost I'm looking at, their labor and all that stuff, is probably about eight hundred dollars. And so we're looking at probably about three to five to, to going on and that one, put putting it in. And we're still playing with the numbers on that one. How are you financing this endeavor? Do you have your own money, or are you looking for angel investors? We're looking for angel investors. We're looking for um, that has been one of our um, Derek and I can tell you we've knocked heads on this one in consternation because you know just how are we going to you know not 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 knock heads in a bad way but just like brother what are we going to do now <laughs> yeah, so that, that's important to have a strategy yes yeah. and, and what has happened is the uh, we had an investor lined up who was supposed to come on board in the end of february but he was waiting for his invested money to come back from a lawsuit and he said, I want to do this with a lawsuit sort of dragging through the court, so we ain't seen that money. So then we had a second investor who was all set up to do it, and he said, I want you to do X, Y, Z first before I give you any money. I think he was Mark Cuban. You know, so that's kind of stuff. Yeah. So we're now looking, so Hector is now looking at third and fourth, plus we're trying to get over to see <coughs> Lexi and her people about getting a small business loan to get, to get moving. So that is the big thing right now, it's the money. And the other thing we're looking at is, um, I've never worked on a commission or done commission type work, so if anybody out there has, is if we bring on the sales force, is it best or better to do base plus commission or commission only? And that's kind of one of the things that kind of like from here from folks who have Work in that type of environment because I am totally ignorant on that. You know, and frankly, to me, it scares me if I'm just doing straight commission, so kind of like the base, and then you know, as your commissions go. Um, I've, I've had some experience with, uh, like, my stepdaughter did uh, calls for uh, bottle free water here in Bayville. Yes. Um, and that sounds like a similar sub structure. You've got a sales force that sets the appointment, and then an installer that goes out and does it. Um, and they, she was probably making. An hour or something like that is base pay, um, but she wasn't working a lot of hours. She was doing, you know, your calls are probably from five to nine every night, um, and then on the weekend, of course. But uh, but then they would pay a per appointment if the appointment was a successful. You know, the installer actually got to go there. Um, they got a bonus for that. The bonus was like I don't remember the exact numbers, but it wasn't it wasn't anything outrageous. It was like twenty dollars or something like that per appointment set, and I'll pay you. Did she feel more loyalty to the company because of the, the bonus? <coughs> and the, no, that the bonus? that entire that entire staff. Uh, the impression I got. Now I never met them, but the impression I got was it was very transient, kind of like a fast food job. Um, they weren't looking for growth or anything like that. Basically, you train them to say what you want them to say. You got they got the job done. Yeah. So and that's, that's one of the things we want to try to avoid. Yes, there's going to be some canned scripting you know but we're we don't we're not also looking for cold calls we are trying to avoid the cold call we, we want to do the warm call like word of mouth gets out everybody says you're interested to do the advertising the marketing so people are coming to us for the interest as opposed to call calling because i get phone calls and i don't recognize the number i don't even answer it you know we're all getting into the habits so we want to do the warm call 
know, somebody walks in there and they hear about us, and, you know, at least they're interested. Yes, you may need to do some telemarketing at the start, though, because if you don't have a customer base from which to pull, pull referrals, you've got to you've got to get over that hump somehow. I, I know in my business, I have paid telemarketers to uh, to get me leads simply because uh, you know my time is valuable. Yes, and that's something that I I have uh, decided to contract out. And, uh, so you're doing what you you're doing what you make money for. So yes, exactly, yes, exactly. Yes, I'm yes. one guy, so I've got to I've got to do what's going to make me the most money. So you may want to, you know, either hire telemarketing staff. Of course, in telemarketing, there's high turnover, high churn rate. So you've got to look at that as an expense as well. Well, I'm going to take her idea. I know because she's a great and wonderful American, great woman, also a friend. That uh, she's going to—it's going to be very successful doing just stuff in the chamber, sir. So, do you have a ballpark figure on what all this is going to cost you to get it started? Was he throwing about two hundred fifty? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, so, the two fifty is what we're told the initial. I, that, that's the number. I, that's the number I remember hearing. For and does that cover? Your marketing, your is yes. that a PL? That's yes. what you need to get started and yes. last for how long until you start making some money? We are thinking that should last for about three months. Yeah, you'll yeah. go through 250 pretty quickly. Yeah. That's just two, the, two, the two, initial two, start up, the initial production run. Yeah. So that's that's the and that's and if I'm off base, guys, let you know, we can meet. <coughs> I'll give you my email comes up and you just let me know if I'm off base. I can meet you know. I said I need some smart people to tell me if we're out of the ballpark. Do you have a business plan? I don't have it with, yes, there is a business plan. Yeah, that's yes. absolutely critical. Yes, yes. Because if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that Hector has been agonizing over that business plan for a while, and I'm getting the hive. You've already answered the question, my question, so what can the community do for you? Um, we would like to thank Jeff again for great <laughs>